the most important thing you can ever do is spend time with Jesus. You won't glow if you don't sit at the feet of Jesus. But let me tell you something. Spending time with Jesus is numero uno. That's number one. Don't ever forget that. It's what you dedicate, God consecrates. All we do is dedicate ourselves to God. God takes control by the Holy Ghost. Even in our prayers, we don't work ourselves up. We don't work burden up. We don't work compassion up for the lost. It's the Holy Spirit in us that drives us to the lost, that drives us to our knees, that groans in our prayers. You see, if you've got sin in your heart waiting on God, it's the hardest thing you've ever been called to do, and you don't want to do it, you can't do it. Just waiting on the Lord in His presence. Just waiting for God to speak, waiting for God to act. Because people who move in the flesh don't know how, cannot wait on the Lord. Did God call you to give yourself as a man or woman of prayer? Did God cause you to draw nigh to Him at one time? You said yes, well how long did it last? Did it last a week, two weeks, six months? How long did it last? And you were camped halfway and God had something on the mountain for you and something called you back. Busyness, something of the world. I don't care how the rest of the world goes. I don't care what the new fad is. I don't care what new thing has come down the turnpike. As for me, I hunger for God and I'm going all the way. I'm going to seek His face and I'm going to wait on the Lord. Today's Consider it sadistic if you say people have to take up their cross even. Don't tell young people about the cross, they'll be discouraged. Well, are you suggesting Jesus wasn't smart? If you're going to be my disciple, kiss the world goodbye. I say this in all due respect. You know, it's not very difficult to make records and stir people. It's not very difficult to make books, I can write books. But tell me, where is the man who can bring fire from heaven today? Anybody will buy our records, almost every day people write. That doesn't take much moral courage to sit in a swivel chair and reach for my Bible and look through some references and find a lot of things come crowding into my mind. But what if I meet Ahab in the way? You know, when Elijah, before he called down the fire, he went back and he built the old altar. We don't want to go back to old altars, to old vows, to old commitments. We're all trying to make new things. God knows they'll be broken down anyhow in a few weeks. Christianity has not been weighed in the balances and found wanting, it's been tried, found difficult and rejected. I don't know where you are spiritually, but there's not a man who's walking with God that doesn't know he could have been further up the road than he is if he'd really taken care. If somebody had taught him when he was born again, did you not know happen? He was born and he was put in a refrigerator. Mr. Chadwick used to say to us, gentlemen, win souls, but don't bring them to birth and put them in a refrigerator. The church never had more equipment than she has now. She never had less power. Never less than the omnipresent God. As I've said before, when did you last tip to out of church Sunday morning breathless? Awed by the awesomeness of God's majesty, God's glory, God's omnipotence. We know what's going to happen. Stand up, sit down, stand up, sit down. Now the choir will sing, sit a bit longer. Now the box is coming, drop some offering in it. What's the good of having all the machinery in the world if you're not into driving? We're all dependent on one thing when we sit in the car. We turn the switch and if there is no spark there, you're finished. The car may be insured, it may be the cleanest car, it may be in wonderful condition, but it needs a spark to drive it. But look at all the equipment in the church. If the fire of the Holy Ghost really came upon the church today, we could shake the world in six months.
Let me tell you, in the midst of everything else you're doing, something within you can say, God, I want my life to count. God, I know there must be more. God, I do not want to waste my life. And Nate Saint said, people who do not know the Lord ask us, why in the world we waste our lives as missionaries? So they fail to recognize that they too are expending their lives. And when the bubble has burst, they'll have nothing of eternal significance to show for the years, the lives that they have wasted. The end of our lives, we stand before God, we look into eternity, we see the glories of His presence, the reward for the righteous, we see the horrible punishment for the lost. None of us on that day are going to say, no, I prayed too much. No, I shouldn't have sacrificed for the cross. No, it wasn't worth being rejected for Jesus. No, we're going to say, oh God, if I could just go back and do it again. God, if I could just have one more opportunity, I'd go after you. Well, here it is. Here's the opportunity. Here's the chance. Methodist preacher W.E. Sangster said, How shall I feel at the judgment if multitudes of missed opportunities pass before me in full review and all my excuses prove to be disguises of my cowardice and pride? Come on, what's stopping you? Spending time with Jesus is an interrelated.